Okay. Uh, well, thanks everybody for joining this evening. Welcome. It is, uh, I know it's uh, a little different to be doing this again through Zoom, but hopefully maybe next year, Mr. Shem, we'll be able to, to do this and we will be able to do this in person. Um, you know, right now, as you know, we are in the midst of two important consecutive days for the Jewish people, where we go from sadness to joy. Today, we commemorated the somber Yom HaZikaron, Israel's Day of Remembrance, for its too many fallen heroes. Tonight, we go right into the exuberance of Yom HaTzmut, Israel's Independence Day. We all know that transition can be difficult, just as the transition issues we are experiencing coming out of the COVID quarantining and going slowly back into normal society. While we mourn those who have passed, we are looking forward to brighter days ahead for all of us. Yom HaZikaron is a time to remember the brave soldiers who have fallen in defense of our land. Each one was precious and heroic. Israel's proud Hayalim are a constant reminder that we as a people can now protect and defend ourselves something we were unable to do not that very long ago. Yom HaShal was commemorated, if you remember last week, with this wonderful program that we had in solemn memory of our parish during the Holocaust. For us in West Orange, it was doubly sad, as it was the first Yom HaShal that we had without our beloved Mickey Weiss. He had to live with the numbers tattooed on his arm with his terrible memories every day of his life. Yet, he did not let that knock him down, and he always had what a wonderful, sweet, gentle disposition and personality. On the contrary, it strengthened him and his resolve to help build our shul and this community out of the ashes of his life. Mickey was a true survivor, and we miss him every day of our lives. He was a proud community member, and he loved everybody in it, especially he loved the young men and women who went to Israel and became lone soldiers. For a relatively small neighborhood, it's really hard to believe that such a large number of Chaylin Bodadim that we have. At present, there are five on active duty and several more preparing to draft within the next few months. Keep them in mind the next time that you say the Mishabera for Chaylin in Shul. So now we will be in the official part of our program with a video that was, will commemorate Yom Hazikaron. Be 
ושחרפו נפשם למות על קדושת השם. על קדושת Now we will transition from Yom Hazikaron to Yom Atzmud. And I look, look forward to Rabbi Zwickler will now share some inspirational words on this transition from Yom Hazikaron to Yom Atzmud. Thank you, Larry. And uh, thank you for your work in putting uh, tonight together. It, uh, we are a nation, we are a people that always transitions. And so appropriate that Yom Atzmaut starts with Yom Azikaron, because before we can appreciate the present, we have to appreciate the past. Rav Soloveitchik Zatzal has a in the book, The Five Addresses, in which he had several essays that he spoke about on different topics, he addressed um, the flag of the state of Israel. And he speaks to it beautifully uh, that I think connects Yom Azikaron and Yom Azmu. And he says, if you ask me, how do I look upon the flag of the state of Israel? And has it any halachic value? He said, I would answer plainly. In the Shulchan Aruch, one who has been killed by non-Jews is buried in his clothes so that his blood may be seen and avenged. In other words, the clothes of the Jew acquire a certain sanctity when spattered with the blood of a martyr. How much more so how much more is this so of the blue and white flag, which has been immersed in the blood of thousands of young Jews who fell in the war of independence, defending the country and the population. It has a spark of sanctity that flows from devotion and self-sacrifice. We are all enjoyed to honor the flag and to treat it with respect I noticed yesterday there was a very, very powerful moment that took place at the Capitol. It was a memorial for the Capitol policeman who was killed last week. And President Biden addressed the family. And his words were very touching. He said to the children, my prayer for all of you is that a day will come when you have that memory and you smile before you bring a tear to your eyes. I promise you it's going to come. It just takes a while. As a people, we are always reminded of our struggles, of our challenges throughout history. And yet, as I began, we are a, pe a people who lies on the floor one day and rises up like a lion the very next. And while we look at the Israeli flag draped on the coffin of so many soldiers, victims of terror over the years, we also look at the Israeli flag emblazoned on a plane that we see here in the airport when we're ready to pick up, to go and visit, and proudly for many of our members to return back home to our true home. And so as we transition from a time of remembrance to a time of celebration, as we take in the greatest blessing that Hashem has given to our generation, we step back in awe, we give thanks 
to Hashem. We hope that Hashem continues to watch over the soldiers who continue to defend our people and our land, watches over the leadership and blesses all of the people that live in the land of Israel, that are part of the state of Israel, and all of us throughout the world. I would now like to ask Rabbi Sharbat to recite a capital to Hillim for the soldiers of the IDF, followed by the Mishaberach Litzahal, and then following that, the Tefillah L'Shalom Hamdina, the prayer for the State of Israel. Hine lo yanu velo ishan, shomer Israel, Adonai shomerecha, Adonai tzilecha al yadim inecha, yomam ma shemesh lo yakeka, veyareach balayla, Adonai yishmocha mikol rab, yishmor e nafshecha, Adonai yishmor tzedcha uvoecha, meata veyad olam. Mishaberach Avoteinu Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov, who Yivarecha Chayel Eitzva Ganan Yisrael Reanche Kochot Abitachon. Hamdim Mishmar Atzeinu Varelo Einu Mikvul Alavanon Van Midbar Mitzrayim Uminayam Agadol Atovah Harava Umikom Akom Shem Bayab Bashab Aviru Vayam Itein Adonai Etoivenu Akamim Aleinu Nigafim Lifnehem Hakadosh Baruch Hu Yishmo Veyatzid Chayelinu Mikol Tzara Vetzuka. ומכל נגע ומחלה, וישלח ברכה והצלחה בכל מעשה ידיהם, ידבר שונאינו תחתיהם, ויתרם בכתר ישוע ובתר ניצחון, וקוים בהם הכתוב כי אדוני אלוהיכם, ההולך עמכם להילחם לכם עם אויביכם, להושיע אתכם ונאמר אמן. אבינו שבשמיים צרו ישראל וגואלו, ברך את מדינת ישראל ראשית צמיחת גאולתנו. הגן עליה בעברת חסדך ופרוס עליה סוכת שלומך ושלח אורך ועמיתך לראשיה, שריה ויועציה ותקנם בעצה טובה מלפניך. חזק את דיני מגני ארץ קודשנו והנחילם אלוהינו ישוע ועטר ניצחון תיאטרם ונתת שלום בארץ ושמחת עולם ליושביה. ותכינו כל בית ישראל פרקונה בכל ארצות פזוריהם ותוליכי, ותוליכי מהרה כמו מיר לציון עירך ולירושלים, משכן שמך. ככתוב בתורה משה עבדך, אם יהיה נידחך בקצה השמיים, משם יקבץ לך אדוני אלוהיך ומשם יקחך. והביאך אדוני אלוהיך אל ארצה אשר ירשו אבותיך וירשת, והיטיבך וירבך מאבותיך, ויחל לבבינו להבה ולירא את שמך ולשמוע את כל דברי תורתך, ושלח לנו מהרה בן דוד משיח צדקך, לפדוד מך כקץ ישועתך. והופעה בהדר גאון עוזך, כל יושבי תבל ארצתך, ויאמר כל אשר נשמה ואפו. אדוני לא יישא מלך ומלכותו והכל משלה, אמן סלה. Thank you so much, Rabbi Zwickler and Rabbi Shabbat. Very inspiring and very emotional, and thank you very much. As we all know, travel to Israel has been halted for most of us this past year, despite the best efforts of many that we have tried and that many have actually have gotten there. But we could celebrate Israel's Independence Day from here and hope that things open up soon for everyone. Israel's becoming a state was no mean feat. It took hard work and bravery on the part of so many of you. But what you may not have realized is that also took the help of many, many volunteers from around the world. The Told Al Israel video you're about to see highlights the amazing efforts of a few of the many special volunteers who answered the call and stepped up to the plate to help make Israel a reality. I will now transition into the video. In 1947, the threat of all-out war loomed in Palestine. With limited experience commanding large units, flying fighter planes, or sailing battleships, the Jewish underground fighters were at a disadvantage against the invading Arab armies. Prevented by the British authorities from legally manufacturing or buying ammunition or building the infrastructure for a modern army, the temporary Jewish government in Palestine turned to the diaspora for help. 
Jews around the world answered the call and volunteered, putting their lives on hold, leaving behind home, family, and jobs to help their brothers in need. I was not just an adventurer. I wasn't a soldier of fortune. We were never a party, never politically involved in this kind of Zionism or that kind of Zionism. And that didn't matter to us much. We just loved Israel. Part of my motivation in becoming a Zionist, part of it was a sense of having a refuge where Jews could come if they wanted to and if they had to. And Israel needed people who had war experience. Israel needed war supplies. Israel had literally nothing. My mother, bless her, gave me a kiss and wished me good luck. I said, you're doing the right thing, son. A kiss and out the door. Yeah. At the end of the war, I was admitted to the Harvard Law School. We began to learn about the concentration camps, what really went on, and about the Jews trying to get out of Europe to get into Palestine. And I, by sheer chance, grew up in the United States, nurtured school, place to eat and sleep all the time, secure. And there was an imbalance here, a real imbalance. I had the good life and they had horror. It was an imbalance that had to be righted. I and mean, we couldn't just sit in law school while this was going on. This was history being made. We didn't go back to our second year in law school. Just didn't go back. We flew us down to Miami, the Palmach guys from New York, where they took us dockside and there was this, this hulk. It was a uh, boat that didn't inspire confidence. We prepared our ship, which carried 20 officers and men. We prepared this ship so that it could accept and safely carry 1,500 people. We took the ship to the coast of Italy to pick up our Mapilim, and then I remember the Mapilim coming from the shore. When you see human beings who have individual characteristics, they're not just concepts, they're real people, and there are the numbers, and they're Jews, they're, they're like me, we're fellow Jews, and what they've been through. It was a profound experience. There was a call out in South Africa by word of mouth to volunteer to come over and help the new state because all the big Arab countries around us were just pouring in to destroy this tiny little fledgling state that had come about after 2,000 years. The Haganah people came to meet us and they said, you're going to take a boat with the new immigrants and you're going to sail across by boat. We got near to Haifa and it was evening and the boat was nearing the shores of Eretz Israel and we saw the lights of Mahar Carmel coming on and somebody, one of the people down below started to sing Hatikva. And all of us stood on the deck as the boat, boat approached Haifa and we were all singing our tikva. And then one of our boys said the prayer, Shechianu ken v'higianu l'sman And all together we said Amen as the boat moved into Haifa. And there were tears in all our eyes. And we got off the boat. Everything was dark. And they interviewed me. And I told them about myself. And they said, of course you can be a nurse. We don't have nurses. You can be a nurse if you know something, even if you're willing. And they gave me instructions. And this lady, one of the chayalot, came and said, come on, I'll take you to where you have to go. She took me to the, um, the quarters where I would sleep that night. And she took my hand. And then she put her arm around me. And she said, don't be afraid, it's dark because of air raids. But you'll be taken care of, and you'll do something special for Eretz Israel. And I never saw this lady again, but she really gave me the courage. I arrived in Israel, spring of 48, before the state of Israel was created. 
that we had a little ship with potatoes. And under the potatoes, we had Spanish Hispano 20 millimeter guns, new guns with grease. New stuff, no, how to shake out the Zaha. Finally got new stuff. But the point was, what are you going to do with the potatoes? They get rotten. And we got the guns, and then they sent me to Panmach the same day. As we moved south, we got involved with the Battle of uh, Fallujah. We had a certain amount of chutzpah we should not have, uh, have had. And when I saw the plans, I knew it was very chancy. We had 400 fighters. The Egyptian brigade consisted of almost 3,000 men. And it was raining all the time. And the troops were tired. And then we were ordered to attack. Pluga Aleph broke into the town and village. Pluga Bet, I heard my cousin saying that the Kval Kmat Beyodeno, he already had prisoners. Suddenly I got an order to go all the way around to Bechibrin because the situation was deteriorating. And it did. By the time I got there, on the other end, the battle is over. Who got bad, my cousin, got wounded again, and my second in command that I sent was killed. Otherwise, he had another one or two other wounded, wounded or killed, I don't know. And Pluga Gimen, the religious company, got the brunt, and only 14 escaped. I never realized that there was no soldiers between us in Bet Romano, Bet Tel Aviv, that was headquarters. There was nobody. Because the rest of them were fighting in El Arish and all the other places. We stretched ourselves thin to the point. So I was basically the only Koach left. The war was a difficult war. I was a chemistry major. Israel had some guns, but they had no munitions. And they wanted to be able to manufacture munitions bullets. So our mission was to develop a bullet from the material available to the uh, Jews in Israel uh, and to be able to get to them back to them on time. At one point, there was an alarm, and we all scrambled, took all our papers and chemicals, put them away, and a whole set of other papers and chemicals. I looked about this whole thing, very strange. Turns out the FBI was coming. So they came, and they left, and of course they winked, you know. They knew what it was all about, and we knew what it was all about, we weren't going to say anything. So as they left, everything went reverse. The stuff we're working on came out. Did we succeed? I think we did at the end, and we got the formula, uh, and they were able to manufacture the bullets for the David Cup. We had to take a hill. How do we take a hill which is full of Egyptian infantry, backed by artillery? 4.30 one morning, surprise attack. We were halfway up the hill before they knew what was coming, and we took it. I think it was a bloody miracle. We took it. The next day, they sent up four guys with two bezels. They were the big machine guns with bullets this big, you know that could pierce armor. And the bezels got to work on the road and stopped the tanks and stopped the armor from coming through. They were just stuck there. And of course, they sent troops up every day and they dive bombed us with Spitfires, which I got crazed about. Spitfires were defending us in London. That feeling of a homeland at last when nobody could kick you out, it was yours. And it was a marvelous feeling. The first act of the newly established state was to abolish all restrictions on immigration. Between 1948 and 1951, over 700,000 Jewish immigrants streamed to the state of Israel, doubling its population. Ben Gurion happened to call me. He says, we need 
fast action because we've opened the gates now. Ships are coming in every day, and we understand that you're familiar with housing. I want you to know we have no money. We got there, and the first thing, the next morning, we have a meeting set with Ben Gurion. He's over there behind his desk in this little makeshift building in there, and he stands up behind the desk like this, and he puts out his arms, and he says, New Isidore, where's the houses? <laughs> but people said, Israel has no raw materials. There's no metals, there's no wood, there is no timber, there is no material to build housing with, so you're gonna have to import them. It just so happens that reinforced concrete, which is a brand new item, people know, was only being discovered or used when I was in college. And making reinforced concrete is a very simple operation, and anybody can do that, and you can put them to work, and all you need is one little machine, uh, smaller than an automobile, and you can put it anywhere you want to make. Any town, any place you want, you put it. And as long as you're shoving it, put in some crushed rock and some sand and water and cement. That's reinforced concrete. We set up an industry, we made a design of the type of uh, houses you'd see in California or Florida. They were setting new town for these people to go out and start inhabiting the, these towns. Whatever I had to give, I wanted to give it to the Jewish people, and I knew that when I was having the best life possible, imaginable in Boston, successful with the practice of the law, comfortable financially, everybody's happy and healthy. It's not what I want out of life. You have to do things sometimes, even if it's done uh, quietly, even if it's against the law, but there's a higher law we had to obey, and it worked out, thank God. To be there in 48, and to be involved in the things we were involved in, we felt we were very lucky. To have missed that would have been, I think, rather sad. Two things happened. I had a small part, an active part, in the creation of the State of Israel. But the biggest reason I remember that, because of my coming and getting involved, I happened to meet one of the nicest girls in the world, my wife. The Gahagana people who were escorting us, they didn't understand what I was doing. And one of the young men there, he came up to me and he said to me, what do you think you're going to do in Israel? There's a war on. Don't you think it would be dangerous? Who gave you permission to be here? So I said to him, Ani I'm I'm Vani Balazor. And that is why I'm coming to help you, because I want to be part of your people, because I am part of your people. about to all of those selfless volunteers. Pretty amazing, right? Pretty amazing to see some names like uh, Rabbi Lamb, right? And uh, Fidel Sassoon and other players as well. They showed us their hard work and dedication, what is possible. They taught us that each volunteer can make a big difference. This sounds true today for us here. Even we cannot be together, we still work together. And on the behalf of the shul and for Israel, doing our part, to keep both vibrant and strong. Thank you. Well, again, thank you again, Michelle, for informing us what's going on. Um, to conclude tonight's program, you know, we couldn't end, of course, we have to end with Hatikva. And of course, Steve Schwartz, who's in, um, in Florida, is gonna do it uh, obviously through video, but uh, he, is, uh, he is going to do it. So I'm now going to uh, transition over to Steve. And of course, um, feel free, please, to stand up while Steve is singing Hatikva, so we all can sing together as well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Tufate Mizrach Kadima Ayin Letzion Sophia O Lord of Dati Kvatenu Hatikva Bat Shinot Al Paim Liot Dam Chofshi Beyar Tzeinu Eretz Tzion Virushalayim Liot Dam Chofshi Be'yartzeinu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Thank you, Steve. As always, we miss you here in West Orange, but we're glad that we get to see you, hear you and see you from Florida. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. Uh, we couldn't do without everybody here. Um, thank you. Uh, big thank you again, of course, to Rabbi Zwickler, Rabbi Shabbat, uh, and Michelle for leading us in, in this program. Um, and also a special thank you to Sharon Zukov. I know you're not seeing her, but she was my partner in crime here. So I want to say thank you to Sharon for being my partner and doing this together. Also, thank you to Eva Levinson, who helped us uh, find the first video. And uh, through Sharon and Howard Weiser, who has helped us find the second video. Um, so we really just want to say thank you. And so please God, Mirza Hashem, we hope to be able to do this in person next year in, in West Orange. If not, even better, let's do it in Yerushalayim. Uh, have a wonderful evening, everybody.